This is the story of Mr. Strong. Mr. Strong is the strongest person in the whole wide world. The strongest person there ever has been, and probably the strongest person there ever will be. He is so strong that he can not only bend an iron bar with his bare hands, he can tie knots in it. Mr. Strong is so strong, he can throw a cannonball as far as you or I can throw a tennis ball. Mr. Strong is so strong, he can hammer nails into a wall just by tapping them with his finger. Strong by name and strong by nature. And would you like to know the secret of Mr. Strong's strength? Eggs. The more eggs Mr. Strong eats, the stronger he becomes. Stronger and stronger and stronger. Anyway, this story is about a funny thing that happened to Mr. Strong one day. That morning he was having breakfast. And for breakfast he was having eggs. Followed by eggs. And to finish he was having, guess what? That's right. Eggs. That was Mr. Strong's normal breakfast. After his eggy breakfast, Mr. Strong cleaned his teeth. And, as usual, he squeezed all the toothpaste out of the tube. And, as usual, he cleaned his teeth so hard, he broke his toothbrush. Mr. Strong gets through a lot of toothpaste and toothbrushes. After that, he decided to take a walk. Put on his hat, opened the front door of his house. What a beautiful day, he thought to himself. And stepping outside his house, he shut the front door. The door fell off its hinges. Mr. Strong gets through a lot of front doors. Then Mr. Strong went for his walk. He walked through the woods. But he wasn't looking where he was going. And walked slap bang into a huge tree. A huge tree trunk snapped. And the tree thundered to the ground. Whoops, said Mr. Strong. He walked into town. And again, not looking where he was going, he walked slap bang straight to a brick wall. And Mr. Strong, being Mr. Strong, walked straight through that brick wall. Whoops, said Mr. Strong. Eventually, Mr. Strong walked through the town and out into the country, to a farm. The farmer met him in the road, looking very worried. What's the matter? asked Mr. Strong. It's, it's my cornfield. It's on fire and I, I can't put it out. Mr. Strong looked over the hedge and sure enough, the cornfield is blazing fiercely. Water, said Mr. Strong. We must get water to put out the fire. But I don't have enough water to put the whole field out cried the worried farmer, and the nearest water's down to the river, and I don't have a pump. Then we'll have to find something to carry the water, replied Mr. Strong. Is that your barn? he asked, pointing to a barn in another field. Yes, I was going to put my corn in it, said the farmer, but... Can I use it? asked Mr. Strong. Yes, but... No buts. Come on. Mr. Strong walked over to the barn, and do you know what he did? He picked it up. He actually picked up the barn. The farmer couldn't believe his eyes. Then Mr. Strong carried the barn above his head down to the river. And he turned the barn upside down. Then he lowered it into the river so that it filled up the water. Then, and this shows how strong Mr. Strong really is, he picked it up and carried it back to the blazing cornfield. Mr. Strong emptied the upside-down barn full of water over the flame. Sizzle, sizzle, sputter, sputter. One minute, the flames were leaping in the air. The next minute, they'd gone. However, can I thank you? The farmer asked Mr. Strong. No, oh, there's nothing, remarked Mr. Strong modestly. But I must find some way to reward you, said the farmer. Well, said Mr. Strong, you're a farmer, so you must keep chickens. Yes, I do, said the farmer. Lots. And chickens lay eggs, went on Mr. Strong. And I rather like eggs. 
Then you shall have as many eggs as you can carry, said the farmer, and took Mr. Strong over to the farmyard. Mr. Strong said goodbye to the farmer and thanked him for the eggs, and the farmer thanked him for helping. Then Mr. Strong, just using one finger, picked up the eggs and went home. Mr. Strong put the eggs carefully down on his kitchen table and went to close the kitchen door. The door fell off its hinges. Whoops, said Mr. Strong, and sat down. The chair fell to bits. Whoops, said Mr. Strong, and started cooking his lunch. And for lunch, uh, he was starting with eggs, followed by an egg or two. Uh, he had an egg between eggs, and an egg on the side, and an egg for luck, and then uh, eggs. And then for his pudding, he was having, well, can you guess? For his pudding, he was having ice cream. <laughs> was very small, and like a rubber ball. He just couldn't keep himself on the ground. He bounced all over the place. And, as you can imagine, that made things rather difficult. Last week, for instance, Mr. Bounce was out walking when he came to a farm. He climbed over the farm gate and... You can guess what happened next, can't you? He jumped down from the gate and... Bounced right into the duck pond. Quack! Went the ducks. The other morning, for instance, Mr. Bounce was in bed. He woke up and jumped out of bed and... You can guess what happened next, can't you? He bounced right out of his bedroom door and all the way downstairs. Bounce it, bounce it, bounce it, bounce it, bounce. Well, that happens quite often, which probably explains why Mr. Bounce leaves his bedroom door open every night. After he picked himself up, Mr. Bounce went and sat down to think. Mr. Bounce bounced off the chair and banged his head on the ceiling. Ouch! said Mr. Bounce. Oh, this is ridiculous. Mr. Bounce thought to himself, rubbing his head. I must do something to stop all this bouncing about. He thought and thought. I know, he thought. I'll go and see the doctor. So, after breakfast, Mr. Bounce set off to the nearest town to see the doctor. He was passing a tennis court when he tripped over a pebble. And he bounced right onto the court where two children were playing tennis. And you can guess what happened next, can't you? The children didn't realize that Mr. Bounce wasn't a tennis ball and started hitting him with their tennis racket. 
backwards and forwards over the net. Oh! Ouch! Ouch! Poor Mr. Bounce. Eventually, one of the children hit Mr. Bounce so hard, he bounced right out of the tennis court. Mr. Bounce bounced off down the road towards the town. Oh dear, he said, feeling very sorry for himself. I've been bounced black and blue. A bus was coming down the road. Mr. Bounce decided that the safest place for him to be would be on it. He got on and sat down, still feeling more than a little sorry for himself. The bus drove into town. stopped right outside the doctors. Mr. Bounce stepped down from the bus and onto the pavement and bounced in through the doctor's window. <coughs> Dr. Makewell was sitting at his desk enjoying his mid-morning cup of coffee. Mr. Bounce sailed through the open window. Flash! <coughs> went the coffee. Ow! Squeaked Mr. Bounce. Coffee was rather hot. Good heavens! exclaimed Dr. Makewell. After the doctor had fished Mr. Bounce out of his coffee and set him on some blotting paper to dry up, he listened to what Mr. Bounce had to tell him. So, you see, said Mr. Bounce finally, you must give me something to stop me bouncing about all over the place quite so much. Hmm, pondered the doctor. After some thought, Dr. Makewell went to his medicine cabinet and took out a pair of tiny red boots. This should do the trick, he told Mr. Bounce. Heavy boots. That should stop the bouncing. Oh, thank you, Dr. Makerwell, said Mr. Bounce. And walked home wearing his red boots. Not, not bounced. Walked. Mr. Bounce went to bed wearing his heavy boots, and then he went to sleep. The following morning, he woke up, yawned, stretched, <sighs> and bounced out of bed. And he went straight through the bedroom floorboards, and, fin and finished up in the kitchen. <laughs>